Hey there, and welcome to CFIBoardNotes.com. My name is Mikhail French, and welcome back to the 152 and U series, right? Where we're going to be taking the 152 POH and just kind of condensing it and simplifying it into a way that you and your students would be able to understand, right? So we're just going to try to connect everything as much as we can to, you know, real world examples as well as just explain everything a bit more. All right, so let's go ahead and move. We have started with the airplane familiarization. We have the flight controls, and now we are going over the landing gear. So the landing gear itself, as you can see, compared to everything else, it's going to be relatively simple, right? And uh, well, when I talk to my students about it, you know, I kind of just liken it to the wheels of a car. You know, obviously the wheels are meant to be down. You know, these are car wheels. They're always meant to be down in the ground. But, you know, for example, if you have a hump and the thing goes up, there will be some shock that you're going to be experiencing. Now, with the 152 or with any airplane, just because it's coming in down from the air all the way to the landing spot, you know, the shock would be so much more. But generally, it has the same concept. Right. So this is just like what we said, just about perfect for student pilots and quote unquote safe landings. As we know, when we all started off, you know, there wasn't really such things as safe landing because we were all figuring it out. But this would help, especially for people who you know are just kind of getting used to touching down at the ground. So we have the section called the No Year One Fifty Two where. This is all based purely from the POH. And when I get my check right, for example, you know, when they ask me, hey, what is a landing gear? Right? And these are the things I want to be able to talk about. And for the most part, if I explain all of this, they are going to be okay with that. Right. So, and you can always find this over in the POH or the actual POH. So as far as knowing the landing gear, this is a tricycle type landing gear. When we say tricycle type, think of a bicycle with two wheels. Now think of tricycle. You got the one wheel on top and you got the two wheels on the bottom. That's exactly what the plane is like. There's the one wheel over here and you have your two main wheels over on the side. That's a tricycle type landing gear. And we have a steerable nose wheel, which is going to be the front over here. That you can steer, move it to the left, move it to the right, make it go straight. And the nose wheels, there's actually a typo, we'll fix that later, are the main gears. And these are the things over here. Main difference between the two, this, you can steer. These two main wheels, you cannot steer, right? That just goes straight. This is the one leading everything. So as far as shock absorption is concerned, the main gears themselves have what is called tubular spring steel. And we're talking about, you know, this one area over here. Now, why we say tubular spring steel is that if we were going to compare two things, right? Uh, one tube, which is going to be hollow, and another tube, which is going to be um, like solid metal. Let's place it over here, forgive the drawings. When you get the shock, the force would be actually spread out towards the inside of the tube and that allows it to be able to absorb it a lot better. However, when you get force over the solid pieces, you're gonna get these tiny cracks that over time will break the whole thing entirely. It also helps that you know having this tube uh, with all that extra space on the inside just decreases the weight, makes everything a lot lighter. And we like that when it comes to the planes. So we have the tubular spring steel on the main gears. We also have what is called the oleo strut, right? So when we say oleo strut, that's essentially a mixture of oil and air, right? On the nose gear for vertical shock, All right? Keep in mind the nose gear, vertical shock. That has hydraulic oil, which is, so I found out it's a brown color. We all saw it was red, but it's hydraulic oil, which is brown and a combination of air. Now, the shimmy dampener, right, that actually is for lateral shock. So you can see there's a difference, right? Vertical and lateral shock. And they're both going to be on the nose gear, right? Just so happens that the main difference, right, is that the oleo strut has up and down shock absorption. 
However, the chimney dampener has left and right shock absorption. Now, um, it, it's a bit easier to understand the oleo struts because, you know, when you watch uh, a car movie, for example, with Fast and Furious, where you have the guy or like Vin Diesel move up and he's driving off the car talking about brotherhood. And when they land down again, the car just kind of bounces up and down. That's an up and down shock. That's what the oleo strut is for. However, with a shimmy dampener, right? Just think of the last time you went to a supermarket, right? You went to Walmart, right? So when you were pushing the cart, and <laughs> let me draw a cart real nice over here. You know how there's always that one wheel that's wobbly? Like, we don't like that wheel. The shimmy dampener controls that left to right shock and allows the motion to go straight. Okay, we don't need a shimmy dampener over on this side because by design, these things aren't even meant to rotate. This steerable nose wheel though, we want it to go a certain way. And if we want to control it, we are going to be using the rudder and brake pedals. Um, we don't want any other force moving this apart from the force that we're putting on it. That's why we have the shimmy dampener. Now that we know the difference between the two, you know, this one, they both work relatively similar where the oleo strut, right? Um, like we said, air and oil, it just really has a combination of um, nitrogen and hydraulic fluid. So in essence, if a force acts down upon it, with hydraulic fluid, it has a specific quality which we like, where it is non compressible means you can't compress it right so what that does is that it allows you to absorb the shock and bounce it back up right that is where we get the shock shock absorption this is why we like the hydraulic fluid the shimmy dampener very similar you just get the you just get the left or the right with that so honestly that's uh, really it. The main gears are equipped with hydraulically actuated disc type brakes. That's something we'll be able to talk about later. But uh, for the most part, that's really all you have to know about the landing gear. Okay, so we just went ahead and highlighted it. It's a tricycle type landing gear. You know, one, two, three. You have the oleo strut over here, which is a combination of hydraulic and hydraulic fluid and nitrogen. You also have the shimmy dampener, which is similar, but instead of going up and down it goes left and right. That's the shimmy dampener. You also have tubular spring steel for landing gears over this area. And like what we said, nothing too difficult, all right? So if you do have any additional questions with this, you know, don't hesitate to give us a uh, comment down below or just send us an email. The web, the email should be up there. And you know, why just, like, why not just check see if iboardnotes.com? You know, we have this book as well as so many other notes that we can use to help you out understand you know, certain concepts. And it really just allows you to organize your thoughts. So, you know, maybe for a check ride, check your notes out. Um, yeah, this is what we use to help students as CFIs. And this is something that I think you guys will be able to use properly or you guys will uh, be able to get a lot, get a lot from that. Anyways, all right, so uh, thanks, and uh, we'll see you next time.